Welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop podcast, the drips of knowledge you need to start growing. Hey, dude, I just recorded a 30 minute episode and my mic wasn't on. Just talking to myself like a dingus. (laughs) Gosh, I could put a railroad spike in my foot right now. (laughs) I am so bugged. All right. For the people, though, let's do this. (laughs) Rinse and repeat, baby. Um, First of all, I was going to apologize for making a later episode, but now it's going to be even later because I'm a knucklehead. So I just had a big project I was working on this week. It was a big data comb through thing, and I I spent hours and hours and hours in it, and I submitted it today, so that's why I'm late. Okay, let's do this again. (laughs) Here we go. So... Etsy gift mode. You guys saw it. And if you're a fan of the podcast, you know I've been chit-chatting about this for a good while. I have seen the data. And if you want to know, if you think, Jared, you're a prophet. No, no, no. I mean, you can't think that if you want. <laughs> you could just think I am him. I'm great. No, I uh, because I work with in digital marketing, I'm very in tune with algorithms and how they work so that I can produce the best results possible. Um, Etsy is behind in their algorithm other platforms. I would say the number, the best uh, algorithm is Meta. You've heard me probably say this before. The people who have the most data, Google. Best algorithm, Meta. They are so good at what they do, at using the data they have. That's the best way to say it. They are so good at using the data they have. Um, in fact, do you want to hear kind of a, kind of a, how this works? So this will kind of just, you know, for, this is like dinner, dinner topic conversation. But when you're watching reels, and I'm sure you guys have, you know, there's a term of this. Oh, the algorithm started showing me that I went down a rabbit hole. I went down an algorithm rabbit hole of X, Y, Z because you, you show interest in something, right? You start to watch a video and you, you watch it all the way through. And then it's like, hey, we got other stuff like that. You want to see some other stuff like that? Because their whole purpose is to keep you on the platform. So they're trying to feed you whatever it is that you're interested in based on this. And they use creators to be able to do that. Okay. So what happens is as you are watching that and it starts to show things, and you start to engage in things. As you live your life, your phones have your data located to them. You can't have a Facebook account unless it's watching you move. (laughs) And so it's going to watch where you're going and all that kind of stuff. And what will happen is you'll go to lunch with a friend and you and your friend will spend an hour together and and it starts to learn, okay, you're friends with this person. We know who that person is. We have their profile. We know what they're watching and what content you guys have that sort of lines up. And it will try to kind of curate that you're seeing similar things. Interesting, right? This is the reason for it, is that they want you to say, oh, I watched this reel the other day, and they want the other person to say, oh, I saw that too. Yeah, I saw that too. Did you see that when they were talking about, yes, yes, isn't that crazy? Because now they're creating the social pressure of of needing to stay on the platform, be able to have these conversations with your friends because you don't want to miss out. But there's so much freaking content. How did they, how are you both seeing it? It's not because it's the number one thing in the news world. It's just because it's curating based on your, your circles of who you're at. So you may even have your husband or your wife say like, Hey, we saw the similar reel. Like, Hey, have you seen this reel? Yeah, I saw that reel too. Like why? Because they know you're in the same house. And so they're p- passing stuff back and forth. And so when you watch something and let's say you watch it several times, it makes you laugh. So you watch it and you watch it again. And it just kind of is in a loop type thing. It gets like, Hey, show this to the husband. He might appreciate this. And so it jumps back and forth in this kind of stuff. So Anyway, that's just dinner conversation stuff of how that stuff works. But the, the point of this is to say meta is their algorithm is by far the most progressive one. But I can see every other algorithm follows their suit. And I've watched Etsy for the last maybe two years start to really follow their suit, moving away. And sim- Google did something very similar, moving away from just relevancy of keywords and really adding in these other factors. And each of them have a different name for what they call it. Um, Etsy actually has a a name for theirs. I have it open. It is the, let me pull it up. It's somewhere in here. Gosh, I can't find this stupid thing. Well, it'll come up. It's, oh, I I think, I have it. There it is. Context specific ranking or the CSR technology. That's what they call it. CSR technology is the, is their technology, which essentially means, yeah, we track data. And we make, we curate things based on the data we track. So the million dollar question is, well, what are the things that they're tracking? Like, 
what do they care about? And we'll get into all this and we're going to talk about all this so that you're aware of this. But as we move into this Etsy gift mode and something that I've been saying for a good while of like, hey, this is the direction Etsy is going to go. And keep in mind, Etsy doesn't just choose something and say, well, on a whim, we made a decision. Like they're getting back. They have data. They have an understanding. They have a future plan of how they want it to grow. They have projections of the type of income this is going to bring them. This is something they're going all in on. And so when they go all in on something, they have projections for it. They want results, which means there's always this kind of um, free promotion time for people who take advantage of these things because Etsy's trying to get the numbers that they want to be able to project that they're going to hit the numbers that they have said they're going to hit. So let's talk all about this. I got it. I got it all. I have the Etsy handbook open. We're going to, we're going to break this down. So before I break it down though, if you're a fan of the podcast, you know that my wife and I are currently expecting our fifth child. (laughs) Yes, fifth child. So if you didn't think I was crazy before, you can, you're allowed to think it now. Um, and we just found out the gender. So I'm having a girl. So we're adding a, a girl to the, to the old Robinson clan. So I have three boys at the top and then I have two girls at the bottom, which is crazy to think about, but there'll be a point in my life that I will, I'll be outnumbered. It'll be all girls in my home because I think my boys will kind of grow up and move out and I'll still have some girls at home, which is weird to think about because at one point in my life I had three boys and no girls. So, oh, how the turntables. <laughs> That's a Michael Scott quote. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's talk about this. So, in the Etsy seller handbook, they break down how their algorithm works and it's actually pretty good and you can learn a lot from going through it. In fact, I learned something today while I was reading it. You've always heard people talk about vacation mode, and and if you were to ask me, Jared, should I go on vacation mode? My answer to that is no, but that's because of personal experience. I didn't really know that Etsy just straight up came out and said it, but they did in this handbook. So I've just said, oh no, when I would go on vacation mode, it killed me, so don't do it. We teach to, we, I, teach to um, just increase your, your, your processing time, move it up so that it, it's further up. It's, you know, it's better than vacation mode. Um, but yeah, straight up in this handbook, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, if you go on vacation mode, you, we, you know, you lose your spot. <laughs> um, which, you know, dude, you, you just want me to never go on a vacation? <laughs> Come on, Etsy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about this. So under the ranking section of the SEO handbook, they kind of break down like, hey, here's the things we sort of look at. And the one that we all can agree on is relevancy. Essentially meaning, do the keywords match what people search? Now, that's a huge part of SEO. And if realistically, relevancy is probably where you should be putting most of your focus. So are my tags, titles, listing descriptions, categories, attributes? Now, those are the things all Etsy listed. Let me say them again. Tags, titles, listing descriptions. What, Jared? Listing descriptions? Listen, it's a little bit. It's not very big. But... I just tend to start my descriptions by describing the product. This yellow hat, this yellow monkey hat, then talk about it. And then usually in the middle, I will say, again, this yellow monkey hat ships somewhere between two to four days. And at the very end, I say, this yellow monkey hat, if you have any questions about this yellow monkey hat, send me a message. So that I said it three times, what it is. You don't need to keyword pad in there. You don't need to do this stuff. Just say what it is. And instead of saying, this product ships and just say the products at the top, middle, and bottom. That's how, when, anytime you have long form stuff, this is something you can learn from Google when you're writing like keyword stuff for blogs and whatnot. It's top, middle, bottom. Okay? Cool. Okay. The, so tags, titles, listing descriptions, categories, attributes. That's what they use to figure out what it is that you're selling. What I have learned is it's titles, number one, categories, number two, tags, number three. The category promotes the, 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 the title. So if the title matches the category, it's really clear for, it helps the relevancy score. So let me explain this to you really quick. Relevancy is weighted is what it's used in, in, in digital marketing, meaning like it, it, there's certain words that have more weight than other words. Now, the fastest way to weight a word is to say a word more than once. So 
you may be thinking, well, if I sell a candle, does that mean I need to say the can- if I just write candle as much as I can, does that give me a higher relevancy score? No, it only gives you a higher relevancy score of the other words that you only said once. You're following what I'm saying here. So it doesn't matter if you say candle 27 times or two times. It's just whatever has the most saying will have the most weight. Okay, so it's not a numbers game where you need to say it as much as you can. I teach the words that you want to weigh are you usually try to say them two, three times max in a listing. Okay, so here's a great example of when you would use this technique. Let's say that you sell a lighter case that has the Valentine's Day hearts on them. You know, those like little candies, everybody likes the white ones and they're like, Hey, sweetheart, on the, you know, I, I can't remember the freak they're called, but you're following me here. I, I have someone who actually sells these. That's why I'm bringing this up. So if you are selling that, that product doesn't do you a whole lot of good in March because people aren't buying sweethearts. Is that what they're all called? Sweethearts? I don't remember. People aren't buying sweethearts lighters in March. They're buying them in February before Valentine's Day, maybe as a Valentine's Day gift or whatever it may be. So You don't want that listing to be at the front page of lighter case because it's going to just die in March. And when it dies, meaning that when it starts receiving data that people aren't doing what they want with that listing, it will, it'll first shrink. It'll start to fall back in the listing. And that's when you're like, oh my gosh, things are kind of drying up for me. And it's like, well, that's because your listing's starting to dip. That was once a good keyword. It's starting to fall. And then they either replace you with someone else or in best case scenario, they, they will try something else from your store if you have other options. So this is why linking things together is really important. And you'll, you know, I don't want to get heavy here, but if you link things together, that's when it will re- replace. And then you have a chance to start to see a little bit of traffic coming out because it's no longer sweethearts trying to sell in March. And now you can work your way back up into that scenario. So the truth of it is though, I'd rather just Etsy not put my Valentine's Day thing on the front page of Lighter unless people were kind of searching for or were curated. So they were showing habits that they were searching for things, Valentine's gift, and then they search for lighter or they search for Valentine's Day gifts or Valentine's Day stoner gift or whatever it may be. Um, so the, what you'd want to do in that scenario is you'd want to make sure that you said the word Valentine's gift more than once in your listing. So instead of saying Valentine's Day lighter and then going through your title and doing a bunch of keywords, Focus on Valentine's Day gift in that listing. Make sure that that's a weighted keyword so that Etsy sees this as, because they're going to go through your store and say like, yeah, she sells lighters. So we know she sells lighters. This one's Valentine's Day. It happens to be Valentine's Day. We're seeing a big a big spike of people searching for Valentine's Day thing. We have this gift mode now that's all about this. This is, she's using the term for stoner girl in her title. Now, boom, this is a Valentine's Day gift. It's for a stoner girl. It's a lighter. We figured this out. We're going to curate it in the gift mode. If someone searches for a lighter, we're going to promote this until Valentine's Day because that's the way to keyword and that's the way that you can make things kind of work that way. So that's where relevancy can play its part. Titles, categories, tags, and then the thing I'm hitting home here about is weight. You want to have certain words that are weighted. So things that you want to be in more evergreen, you're going to put more weight in the words that are relevant and things that are a little bit more seasonal or for occasions or for people or for gifts, you're going to focus more on those words to be found under those. And that's how you can split yourself in the search. You can be found under gifts. You can be found under a gift for a mother-in-law, a gift for a mom, or just candle is by weighting your listings. Okay, let's... Let's jump to the next one. Okay, so this next one is listing quality store. So it's above relevancy. So it's relevant. So the first thing Etsy cares about is like, are we presenting the right product based on what somebody wants? Which is a great first, (laughs) that's a great thing to be leading the the pack with. Hey, I would like a colorful shoelace. Are you sure? Because we'd really like to sell you this whiskey cup. Nope, still looking for a colorful shoelace. So yeah, we think these are our colorful shoelaces that we have over here. We're using tags SEO to kind of figure that out. Perfect. Now, how do we place them in order? So do you see how this is working? A lot of people think it stops there. They think, well, I'm not being seen or not a lot of people are clicking on my stuff. I'm not getting a lot of sales. I must have an SEO issue. People just aren't seeing my stuff. And it's like, well, all you have to do is tell Etsy what it is that you're selling. Etsy determines where you fall in the search and then people decide what they're going to click on and buy. 
So your job, tell Etsy what it is that you're selling. Etsy's job, give you the spotlight. Your job, convert the spotlight. Okay? So they call it as listing quality score, which is essentially how much do we trust that you're going to make money for us? Because we have real estate and we're not going to move you to the front unless we think you're a good store that's going to do something for us. So here's what they say. When a buyer searches on Etsy, our goal is to help them find items they want to purchase. To do this, Etsy's search looks at clues. I love that they use that word, clues. <laughs> Blues, clues? You know, it's like clues, really? It's, called, it's data is what they're looking at. But anyway, Etsy search looks at clues from shoppers to determine whether a listing is appealing and meets their expectations once they click. We look at how well a listing converts, how many people view it, and then make a purchase to determine whether buyers are interested in it, which boosts that listing quality score and placement in search results. Okay. In layman's terms, they're essentially saying, look, when people buy your product, it gives us data that people like your product and we're more likely to promote you. But there's a lot that goes under behind the curtain on this. Let's open up this curtain, okay? In, in everything, in everything, and this is paid ads, this is it all. There is what I would consider, the, oh, and is at times noted as the red domino. The red domino is where a number becomes out of KPI. So for example, if I'm running a Facebook ad and it gets shown to a thousand people, and of those thousand people, a certain amount of people click, let's just say 2%. So far, so good. And of the 2% people I have, I, let's say I'm leading them to a place that they opt in, they give me their email. And of that, my opt-in rate is 6%. That's not a good number. That's considered the red domino. Because what that means is from that point on, the rest of the numbers are going to be effed up. <laughs> it's going to be like, well, how many, you know, what's our cost per impression? Oh, that's great. What's our cost per click? Wow, that's fantastic. What's our cost per lead? High. Oh, then what's our cost per booking? High. What's our cost per sale or our cost per show rate? High. What's our cost per offer rate? High. Or in an e-com scenario, it'd be, um, maybe that would make more sense if I do it in an e-com. <laughs> it'd be impression, click, um, view content is the next pixel hit that would take place. Are they looking at the products? Add to cart. Um, what is it called? Payment? Adding pay? Adding payment? Payment method, something like that. I can't remember what the conversion event's called. And then purchase. So well, essentially, anytime a number gets out of KPI or out of what it's supposed to be, the rest of the numbers suffer. That's why it's called the red domino. Because, yeah, if you're getting, if not a lot of people, or if you get a lot of people who are clicking, but they're not looking at your products, then the rest of your numbers are going to suck because they're not looking at the rest. Of, they're, they're not, how, how are they supposed to make purchases if they're not clicking on the actual product, right? Does that make sense? The red domino. Okay. For data to truly be something that a, a platform can read and make sense of, it has to receive data. So it can't make assumptions on things. For that to work, I'm, try, I'm trying to make sure I don't lose you guys. So if it sounds like I'm talking slow, this is my reason. For that to work, a, a listing has to receive data. And then from there, that's when they can determine, because you can't just say, hey, this person released a product, we sent zero people to it, we assume nobody likes it. Like that's not true data. So because of this, Etsy has a technique that they use. This technique is that they give you a boost when you post something new. In fact, they say it right here. When a new listing is created, it gets a small temporary boost in search results so that Etsy search can learn more about how buyers interact with it to determine the listing's quality score. Okay, you hear that? So Etsy gets a bajillions of different products and, and listings put on their platform a day and renewed listings and all that kind of stuff. And so you're asking, does this, does this work for renewed listings as well? The answer is yes, but it's smaller than new listings. It says it right here. Want me to read it to you? Renewed listings get a similar, though smaller, boost. This temporary boost can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days, depending on how often people are searching for that particular item. Okay. Now, 
you remember this phase of, well, what if I just boost, what if I just renew my listings all the time? It says regularly renewing your items or creating new listings just to get this small boost isn't an effective search optimization strategy, <laughs> which means this is the way, this is what this means. We're on to you. If we catch that you're doing it this way, if you're just, if you're just boosting your stuff because renewing your stuff so that you can get this small boost in our stuff, we're on to you. Don't do it. They instead say, hey, recommend on focusing your time and efforts on improving your tags and working on helping increasing your conversion rate. Okay. And that's the truth. I, I, I stand by that. Don't waste your time renewing your stuff. Building out new products is fantastic for two reasons. A, small boost. B, you're adding more terms and, and authority to keywords within your store. So I'm all about new listings. I think that's a great strategy, but renewing, not so much. Okay. So back to this. Um, this listing quality s- score, it, it because Etsy needs data, which we just read, well, yeah, we, we admit we need data. So we're going to give you this boost so that we can see. It has to receive a certain amount of data. So for example, if they boost your product to 10 people and one person clicks, that's a 1% click-through rate, but it's not real data because that's a super small section. Here's another way of looking at it. If they boost it to 10 people and six people click, that's a 6% click-through rate. You would take over the world if you had a 6% click-through rate on your listings. It's not true data. The only way you get true data is through volume. You have to have a lot of it to have it make sense. Okay, follow me here. So if you have an item and it starts to get clicks on the item, one of the fastest ways you can collect data is how long someone stays on a listing. Jared, how do you know this? Because I'm a paid marketer. A timer starts. So this is super important to a lot of algorithms and a lot of platforms because how long a user stays on the platform is how much money they can potentially make. And so the longer someone stays, the better. And, and the longer someone stays is a strong indicator that their interest is high in what they're doing. People don't give their attention to things on the internet unless th- they earn it, okay? If your product can get a click and retain a click, you will get a good size boost in your SEO and it isn't until Etsy's like, well, this person isn't actually selling anything that you would then see the, the, that fall. The two things you should target is click after you do relevancy, meaning after you've done your keywords and you know this and you're targeting the right people and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's click and retention. So the stat that Etsy shows you is conversion, right? How many people then buy, which isn't, that's the home run stat. If they show your stuff and you have a great conversion rate and people are leaving great reviews and you ship your stuff on time, money, money, you're a yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. You are good to go. Like that's, that's the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. But what I'm saying is there's this in between, because keep in mind how many listings, thousands and thousands and thousands of listings on Etsy every day are just pouring into the algorithm. So the data point that a lot of these algorithms use is how long is the retention rate based on the click? So how long does someone come in? My program teaches this principle. I'm all about it because we can think to ourselves, I have an SEO problem. People aren't doing this. My store is dropping off. But the truth is, if we aren't retaining people on our listings, then that drops. One of the fastest way to get boost in your SEO is to retain. You can keep your conversion rate the same. You can keep those things the same, but retention matters. And so the way you lay out your listing pictures and the way you walk someone through matters. So if the, there's two reasons people are going to leave. Number one is if it's not relevant to what they click. So if they click on the colorful shoelaces and you bring up a whiskey glass and for whatever reason they click on that, they're like, oh, I thought it was getting colorful shoelaces. This is a whiskey glass. I'm out of here. So as soon as we see something as irrelevant anymore, wait, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I opted in for. This isn't what I wanted to click. They leave. That's gone. Real quick. I want to say this as well. You may have seen this stat or you may have seen this before that you have a low conversion rate, but you're getting a ton of traffic and you're like, my gosh, I'm really nervous that my low conversion rate is going to affect my traffic. And yeah, maybe long term that might be the case, but you're doing step one, which is that you're retaining people on your stuff. So sometimes you might have a really cute item that people just like to look at, but they don't buy. It's good for your store. Like those kind of things are good to help kind of keep some buzz. It's obviously we want conversions and that's what works. But just so you know, is it the worst thing ever? No, 
uh, is it the best way to make money? Uh, no. But is it the best way to help give your store some relevancy? Yes. To show Etsy that you're, yeah, yeah, it's all there. So I don't want you to freak out if that's you guys. Anyway, let's go back to this. If you get the click and then that click stays, you got something. So again, it's people leave when they it's irrelevant to them. Oh, I thought I was getting this. This isn't what this is. Oh, I thought it was only this much. It's actually this much. Like things that dupe them and they bounce from that, you'll get dinged. Etsy will catch the pattern of someone being duped. You know who's really good at it? Facebook. Facebook will shut down accounts that they see that type of behavior because they they can assume that your marketing techniques is duping and they they shut you down. So Etsy, also very good at it. Probably a reason why some people do get shut down randomly. I'm like, what's going on here? That could be part of it because Facebook's known for doing that as well. The other reason somebody leaves is confusion. It's too much work to get the answers to their question. So the best way to, re- if you think about it this way, I want to retain people on my platform is to give them bites of information as they take the actions that you need. This is something that we use in marketing funnels as well. We present things and then they do what we want them to do and we present them the next thing and then they do what they want them to do. We don't lay it all out for them. Here's everything you need to do. Everything takes place in bites so that they're doing, they're, all they have to think about is the action that's currently in front of them. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Munch, munch, munch. Further, further, further in the funnel. Okay. Your listing pictures and how you sell works similar is that you want to say, here's information. Here's more information. Here's more information. Here's more information that's in a selling tone or in a tone that is beneficial towards them that they care about. So we're not saying, here's my product. Here's what it does. Here's why I do it this way. Here's, it's instead saying, here's my product. Here's how it's going to help you. Here's what you're going to love about it. Here's why it fits your vibe. Here's why the gift you're getting it for, they're going to love it. That's the things that they're actually thinking about. That's how you engage them. And if you can get someone to look at your stuff and say, oh, that's totally my vibe. Oh, I love, oh, I didn't know it could do that. Oh, is that what the bottom looks like? That's cool. I like that. If you're creating that experience, you have a boost in your SEO. Okay, I'm pretty much out of time here. I, t- I teach all that in my, in my growth program. Come join me. We'll talk about it all. Until then, I, I have, we, there's a whole other half of this we could talk about. I'll move it into next week. We'll go into the other half of what makes great SEO and makes listings really work for you. And I didn't, I don't feel like I really jumped into the gift side of it. We could talk more about that as well. Okay. See you guys.